This week, our very own Sean Hannity sat down for a one-on-one -on -one interview with Lucifer incarnate California Governor Gavin Newsom. I think he's cognitively strong enough to be I, president. I have conversations with him all the time, yes. And I'll tell you what. You do. I'm dead serious about that. I've, convers I've talked to him when he's been overseas. I've been in Air Force One, Marine One. I've been in the limo with him. I've spent time with him Okay, privately. but you never and answered my question directly. How many times is your phone ping a day people saying, you need to get in this race because they agree with me that he's not up to the job? Uh, I was saying, uh, I, 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 I see where you're going with that. I'm job. asking. No, I, and I'm not answering. I, I, I'm all in. Count on you, it. You would do a two-hour debate with Ron DeSantis. I make it three. Three-hour um, debate with Ron Yeah, make do it. I hear I mean, four. And, and, and do, do it four, with one-day notice with no notes. I look forward to that. All right, Donald Trump. I'm trying for years. Your, I'd be negligent if I didn't get your reaction to what happened in the news. Sad, and, and I say that as an American. I can imagine. Are you friendly with him? I, well, as you know, I, I didn't have a close fist. I had an open hand. We actually had an incredible relationship during COVID. Right. It was incredible. He would play no politics yeah. during COVID with California. Mm -hmm. Whole Foods did shut down one business, but there was a bad location to begin with. They're opening a new one. We have two point seven. sister was out here recently with her team, point, and I said, it's don't bad. go to the wharf. Certain parts are bad, and we own that. I just put the National Guard and the CHP yeah. down there. So while I do applaud Gavin for walking into the lion's den, so to speak, I also see right through it. There would be no reason for Gavin to do a sit-down interview with Fox News and Sean Hannity if he wasn't planning to run for president. Think about it. What business would the governor of the solidly liberal state of California, a state so blue it could make a smurf blush, have going on Fox News if he wasn't trying to angle for national support? Why would he go on a red state tour? Why would he propose a constitutional amendment to go after your gun rights? Damn it, I hate to say it, but it may very well work for him because he lied through his teeth during that Hannity sit down, but he did it with such charisma and conviction. Hell, I almost believed him. Too bad for Gavin, I know better. But what about my fellow Americans? Were they swayed by the white Obama of California? Can he little by little ingratiate himself into the hearts and the minds of the American people? Yes, he can. Do not underestimate that man. Do not. He is a snake in the grass. California is a waste bin under his leadership, but listening to him on Hannity, you think he was doing a marvelous job because this man will spin anything with his forked tongue. He is dangerous. But I know what you're thinking. He said he won't run, and Joe and Kamala have already announced their re-election ticket. How would Gavin finagle his way around that? Folks, easily. Let me tell you how I think this is going to go down. The Democrat crime syndicate and comrades in the media, Injustice Department, FBI, and CIA will slowly begin to allow the Biden crime family to fall. Once this begins, they will convince Joe the only way to save himself is to go away quietly. They will promise to shield him and his family from prosecution or any real consequences. But what about Kamala? How do they replace the first black female vice president with a white straight man like Gavin Newsom? That'll be a little tougher, but I assume Kamala has a price. And let's just be frank here. Once the DNC decides who their chosen one is, it really doesn't matter who protests it behind closed doors. And Kamala isn't as powerful as she thinks she is. If the powers that be decide she's out, she will be out. And Gavin Newsom will then come riding in like a snake with hair gel. He will run. And if we're not very careful and very strategic, he will win. He's watched us for years. He's studied us. He's smart. He is a different breed than Joe or Kamala. Joe is in this for the checks, and he's long since checked out. And Kamala, she checks boxes, and that's it. Gavin is not them. Gavin is smart. He's also playing right into the underbelly of our movement. He's not going after Trump. Hell, he even complimented Trump in his interview the other night. Why? Because he's not scared of Trump, and he knows a very simple fact. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. They both want to take down what will be their mutual biggest threat, Ron DeSantis. I'm telling you guys this because, yes, I'm trying to scare you. You should be scared. I'm scared. Watch that man. He knows what he's doing. I was born and raised in South Dakota. My family ranch is still up and running in the eastern part of the state. And that's partly why this next story really burns my ass. But because South Dakota is a so-called flyover state, it likely never crossed your TV screen. 
80 plus South Dakota farmers, ranchers, and landowners are facing imminent domain lawsuits. Yes, that means they could lose their land. Also, a carbon capture pipeline can be built on their land. But that's not all. My next guest has video evidence of surveyors from Summit Carbon Solutions scouting his property, poking around his land and his shop without permission. This is all part of the Green New Deal radical climate change agenda. But wait a minute. I thought the left was anti-pipeline. I seem to remember these climate zealots claiming to fight for landowners and Native Americans when it came to the Dakota Access Pipeline or the Keystone Pipeline, both of which were set to run through my home state. I forgot these zealots don't actually care about landowners or land at all, just their big, green, greedy agenda. These farmers and ranchers have worked, cultivated, and protected this land for generations, and now it could all be ripped out from underneath of them as South Dakota hat governor Christy Nome does nothing. Well, not on my watch. Joining me now, South Dakota farmer Jared Bosley. Jared, it's great to have you from my home state of South Dakota. Thank you for having me. So I've seen this story. A lot of Americans are unaware of it because, as I mentioned in my open there, we know South Dakota doesn't really usually get a lot of headlines unless the climate change protesters are protesting something. But I want to go to what's happening to you and other landowners. And I want to go to that footage that you captured from your property with these surveyors without your permission poking around your land. What were they doing there? And uh, did they ever reach out to you for permission to come and poke around your stuff? Well, they they serve papers to get permission to kind of go out there and survey. And the judge ordered that they could do it, but they're supposed to give a 30-day notice to, to all of us so you know. And no notice was ever given, and we didn't know they were coming that day or anything. I left the plant. My wife was home recovering from gallbladder surgery, and... She was in the shower and pretty soon someone yelled in the house, hello, hello. So she sent a text just wondering if I had parts coming or someone needed to stop or something or if I knew of anything, knew of no one. Well, then she just started watching them and they left the house here and drove over to the shop and went into the shop, which the shop is not on the quarter of land that is in the condemnation papers or the survey stuff. They had no business being there. And they've already got the judge's order. They don't need to come to my house. They don't need to find me. They're supposed to give us a 30-day notice, and that's kind of the means of contact they're supposed to have with us, which they were, I assume, looking for me. I've been vocal in a lot of the meetings trying to prevent this pipe, hazardous pipe, from going into the ground by the house. And when the wife watched them go to the shop. They, after they did that, they left and went up to the field. They sat there. I told her to go see who it is because they're in an unmarked pickup, Louisiana plates. You just okay. don't, you don't see a lot of them around here. So when she went up there, she called them. She called me right as she walked across the road. When I picked up, I heard summit surveyors. And I said, if it's some of the surveyors, the sheriff should be involved. I'll deal with this later. I was planting. I, I hung up then and I come to a mud hole and had to turn around and deal with the planter. As far as I know, that was the end of it at the time when she sent a text that they're leaving. Well, that's all right. Just figured that was the end. Well, later a detective came to the farm and they said that I threatened to kill these surveyors. I'd never said a word. I was 10 miles north of them. I got witnesses that know that seen me plant and they were planting across the fence. It just all made up stuff. Right. So now then it goes to the, comes back with these charges for contempt of court and they're trying to get that I prevented them from surveying. Well, I don't like the judge's orders that they're out there, but you still have to respect the judge. I mean, right. it's just, it's kind of how the order is. So when we went to court, they found me not in contempt, but they wouldn't listen to any of our evidence to kind of clear my name up and show that they were lying. I mean, you don't just get to right. sign an affidavit with lies that, and then that's perjury. 
but nobody's doing anything about that either around. So it was just a big bully tactic to right, Jared, try to you're keep. Exactly right. So I'm from where you're from. So to me, this all feels a lot like you've got these big city folks coming in. They don't give a crap about landowners, about South Dakotans. They're there for themselves or there for their companies. They don't really care what they traipse on. They think that they are entitled to everything. We know these kind of people because we're from South Dakota. So it's quite obvious to me exactly what's happening here but when you come to the crux of what's happening they're surveying your land because they want to put in this carbon capture pipeline this part of this big green agenda but as I mentioned in my open there I know and you know that every time they want to put a pipeline in everybody goes absolutely wild about the environment and how you can't disrupt the land and you can't disrupt the Native American burial grounds and you can't move the grass and blah 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 so why has there not been the outrage from the climate groups or the land preser preservation groups or the conservationists about this pipeline? What makes this pipeline different? Mm, it's a very good question. All of us in the pipeline family are wondering the, the same thing. Where are all these people now when this is going on? I mean, the Green New Deal thing is just crazy, but I guess it lines, puts, puts money in the pockets of certain people that have a lot of power and can just come and take and do this stuff. But I mean, the whole, it doesn't make any sense to put plant food in a pipe and bury it. Or I mean, everything green uses carbon dioxide and we don't have just a lot in the air anyways. It's at 0.04% now. Well, 0.02 is when stuff starts to die in his death. Why would they wanna even venture down that road is beyond me. It's just, it's, right. it's hard to believe that we have these common sense conversations and this is actually being pushed onto us, something like that. The whole Green New Deal thing, it's just crazy their, their thoughts on it. In fact, everything they're talking about doing and saving, they, they are doing 180 degrees different and hurting things way more than they lead on. Right. And, you know, the heartland, South Dakota, North Dakota, Montana, Wyoming, those states, I mean, I've never seen a population care more about the land and cultivating the land and protecting the land than people who live in those states. And I'm not talking about the ones that vacation there from California. I'm talking about the ones that have lived there for generations. I know my family has a ranch. I grew up in South Dakota. My whole family lives in South Dakota. They care about that land. So when these Green New Deal people come trotting onto our land talking about preserving the environment, when they live in actual crap holes in their big cities, it's wild to me. But you know what else is wild to me? And I want to get your take on it. Governor Christy Nome. All right. I know that a lot of people that don't live in South Dakota, a lot of conservatives think she's some kind of a red state warrior. But when you've talked to her about this, when other landowners have come to her and said, we've got this issue, what has her response been to you? Well, I, I talked with her personally at Dakota Fest, that's a farm show down by Mitchell last August. And we were down there for a forum for this pipeline stuff. They were trying to push their agenda, all that. So we went down to watch and kind of counter and try to ask questions, which none of our questions got asked or answered. And when we left that forum, Christy Nome was walking in because she had some presentation after that. And I asked her, a couple questions. The first one was I walked up to her and uh, I said, Christy, you ran on property rights. That was the number one bullet point on your campaign page was property rights, landowner rights. Been, She's always saying that. And I said, this pipeline is huge that way for property rights. And you've just been silent on it. Why is that? And then she said, well, it's in the PUC hands. There's nothing I can do about it. I said, you're the most powerful elected official in the state. I feel you have more you can do than you're leading on. And then she looked at, looked at me and said, am I supposed to fight all your battles? <laughs> and I was like, well, not the answer I thought, but I guess we're, we're here fighting our battles and wondering when any of these upper politicians are gonna step in because I've wrote letters everybody up and down this pipeline has wrote letters to Christy and John Thune and Dusty Johnson. And we just get zero response out of all of them right. and just wondering when, when they're going to step, step to the plate and, and help their state right. and well, do it. Right. 
Governor Kristi Noem has a long history of this. We know that she cares about ranchers and farmers as long as they have the last name Noem or they're related to her. She certainly cares about those people and she'll take money to make sure that those people are okay. But when it comes to actual farmers and ranchers, a number of winter storms that have come through and really hurt the farmers and the ranchers in the state of South Dakota, she's also been largely silent when they shut down Keystone XL pipeline. Unless she could get a headline or get on Fox News to discuss it, she really didn't care about that one either. So I am like you. I am sick and tired of these politicians from South Dakota just running roughshod because they think they can get away with it because they really uh, domineer over a small state. So I promise you this, Jared, I will be hot on her tail, making sure that she is held accountable for this and everything else. And we will keep on this story because what you guys are going through and the heartland and your property rights and the integrity of what you guys do day in, day out, the backbone Americans of this country you matter, and I want to thank you for sharing your story and being so vocal. I hope you never stop. Thank you. Me and the Pipeline family appreciate this. And if anybody can go to SouthDakotaPropertyRights.com, you can kind of read up on this stuff and learn more of what's happening. And um, just, it's, it's my property this time. If this stuff, eminent domain, goes through for private companies, they're opening a big can of not good for America, and we have to we have to change this and stand strong. And I appreciate the help. Always, uh, always thinking about you guys. Always fighting for South Dakota. God bless you. And I know that you guys are tenacious and you're relentless and resilient. So I I do believe that you will win, and we will keep a spotlight on it. Jared, God bless you, and please say hello to your family and the rest of South Dakota for me. Will do. Thank you very much. Still ahead, I've said it before and I'll say it again. Gavin Newsom will run for president in 2024. And if we aren't vigilant, he will win. My warning. Next.